Welcome back ladies and gents. In today's video tutorial, I'll be looking at 2.7 solving modulus problems. Here is an exam question where four marks. The functions s and t are defined as s of x is equal minus 10 minus x, where x is a real number, t of x is equal to modulus x plus b minus 8, where x is a real number, where b is a constant. Now b could be negative or positive. The equation s of x is equal t of x has exactly one real root. So we can underline that key part there. One real root. Find the value of b. Right. My very first step is to notice that exactly one real root means that the graph of s of x and the graph of t of x will intersect once. So in my solution, step number one, I can write down exactly one real root. implies that s of x and t of x intersect once. Okay, so that's good. Now, my second step is to draw both graphs and see what happens. So, first of all, I'm going to sketch this modulus graph. I'm going to look at some transformations on the side over here. So in the exam, you could maybe draw a little box for rough working out and then go back to your solutions. Right, so first of all, I'm going to let f of x equal modulus of x. I know what the graph of modulus of x looks like. It looks as follows. Okay, then I want to apply a transformation. I want f of x plus b. f of x plus b is just modulus of x plus b. Now what happens over here is you take the modulus of x graph and you shift the b units to the left. So I obtain the following graph. Now the y-intercept is calculated by putting x equals 0 into here. And if I do that, I get modulus of b, which is b. Right, now I want the graph of 2 modulus of x plus b so i'm looking at 2 f of x plus b which is equivalent to 2 modulus of x plus b now over here this transformation takes f of x plus b and transforms it in such a way that the y coordinates are multiplied by 2 and the x coordinates stay the same so my graph looks something like this so the x-coordinate minus b stays the same. The y-coordinate b gets multiplied by 2 to give me 2b. There you go. Right, now I'm nearly there. I want 2 modulus of x plus b minus 8. So what I can do is as follows. I can now look at the function 2, f of x plus b minus 8 on the outside, and that there, if I write it in modulus form, gives me 2 modulus of x plus b minus 8. Now, if I want this graph over here, all I have to do is take this graph over here and shift it 8 units downwards. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Right, so what I notice is that the vertex of this particular graph has coordinates minus b and minus 8. That's the vertex, right? We shifted it 8 units downwards. Now, if I want to work out the y-intercept, I substitute x equals 0. So that's 2 modulus of b, which is 2b minus 8. Right, now I'm going to sketch the graph tx equal 2 modulus of x plus b minus 8. Now before we look at the sketch, this particular method was useful to sketch this. What I've done is started off with a basic shape of modulus of x and applied a sequence of transformations in order to obtain the graph for t of x. Okay, right, I'm going to sketch t of x now.
it looks something like that. The vertex was minus b minus 8. And the y-intercept was 2b minus 8. So in coordinate form is 0, 2b minus 8. Y-axis, x-axis, origin. Okay, so that there is my graph of t of x equal uh, 2 modulus of x plus b minus 8. Now, go back to the first step in the solution. Exactly one real root implies that s of x and t of x intersect once. Very important. Now, I want to draw my graph s of x in this particular coordinate grid so that I have one intersection. So what I notice is that my graph must pass through the vertex in order for one intersection to happen. So before I draw my graph passing through the vertex, if I look at s of x equal minus 10 minus x, my first observation is that the gradient is minus 1, negative gradient, and the y-intercept is minus 10, so I can label minus 10 over here like that. Now here's my line it must pass through the vertex of the modulus graph. So I must have something like that. Okay, so that there is my graph of S of X. Now this is looking beautiful. I've got one intersection, as it says in the question. Okay, right. Now, let's move on to step three of the solution. What I have over here is that the graph of S of X and T of X meet at this particular point. So, what I conclude is that if I substitute X equal minus B into the function S of X, so I can write S of minus B, the output, the y value, must be minus 8. Okay? So that there is very useful because now this particular equation will help us generate the equation involving b. Hence, we can solve for b there. So step 4 in the solution. We have that. If I replace the x with minus b, I can write down minus 10 minus minus b is equal minus 8. Now I can solve this equation for b. That's my target. Right, so I get b equal to 2. And that there is my solution. Right, let's move on to exam question number 2. The function h is defined by h of x equal 2 over 3 modulus of x minus 1 minus 7, where x is a real number. Part A. State the range of h. One mark. Part B. Give a reason why h inverse does not exist. One mark. Part C. Solve the inequality h of x is less than minus 6. Four marks. Part D. State the range of values of k for which the equation h of x equal 2 over 3 x plus k has no solutions. Four marks. Right, let's tackle this juicy question. First of all, for part A, we want to work out the range of h. I usually say to my students, it's always good to sketch your graph and then find the range. So, we want to sketch this particular graph. We can start off with the modulus of x and apply a sequence of transformations in order to obtain this graph, like I did in exam question number one. Right, so using that particular method, I can now sketch this graph for h. All right, ladies and gents, here is the graph of h of x. Now, I want the range of h. So if I'm looking at the range of h, I'm looking at the y-axis. I can see that the graph starts at minus 7 and then goes up to positive infinity. Hence, the range is going to be h of x is greater than or equal to minus 7. That there is the range where h of x is a real number. Okay, now, part A is done. Let's look at part B. 
Give a reason why H inverse does not exist. Now, the inverse function exists if and only if the function is one to one. If we look at this particular function, it is a many to one function. Hence, the inverse function does not exist. So, for part B, you have to write down that <coughs> H of X is a many to one function. And this implies that, okay, so this is the notation for this implies that, okay, H inverse of X does not exist. Okay, so that completes that part of the question. Part C, solve the inequality H of X is less than minus 6. Okay, so let's look at part C. Start off with H of X is less than minus 6. If you do that, you can then move on to the next step and you can write down this particular expression, that part there, 2 over 3, modulus x minus 1, minus 7, so that's my expression, has to be less than minus 6. Okay, right, I'm going to rearrange this and make mod x minus 1 the subject. Okay, people, I arrive at this particular modulus inequality. Now, if you are solving a modulus inequality, um, remember you have to form two inequalities. So the first inequality that I can form is what I have inside the modulus, x minus 1, is less than 3 over 2. The second inequality that I can form is brackets around x minus 1, a minus in front of it is less than 3 over 2. Now, all you have to do is solve each of these inequalities. So, I'm going to very quickly do that. Okay, so, I obtain that x is less than 5 over 2. And over here, x is greater than minus 1 over 2. Okay, so, I can write this in a more compact form as follows. I can write that minus 1 over 2 is less than x, but x is less than 5 over 2. Right, ladies and gents, let's move on to part D. State the range of values of k for which the equation h of x equal 2 over 3x plus k has no solutions. Right, okay, what I've done over here is underlined h of x equal 2 over 3x plus k has no solutions. That tells me something very important, and that important fact is that the graph of h of x, which is this modulus graph, and the graph of 2 over 3x plus k do not intersect. So, my first step in the solution is that there is no intersection. Okay, step number two. What I want to do is now focus on the graph h of x. There's two parts of the graph. There's this part over here and there's this part over here. For this part over here, the gradient is 2 over 3. And for this part over here, the gradient is minus 2 over 3. Okay, let's look at the linear graph. The gradient is 2 over 3. Okay, so what I can deduce now is that the linear has gradient 2 over 3 and this part over here has gradient 2 over 3, so this line over here is parallel to this linear. Okay, now, if there's no intersection, what we need to have that is this line over here must be below the vertex of this particular graph. So, we have something like this. Okay, remember these two are parallel lines. Both of them have gradient 2 over 3. Okay, if I look at this coordinate over here is 1 minus 7, the x coordinate is 1. Okay, no problem. We, we're nearly there, people. We're nearly there. At this particular point on the line, I can deduce that 2 over 3, and at that point x is 1, so 2 over 3 in bracket 1 plus k, so I'm substituting x equal 1 into this straight line, which is 2 over 3 x plus k, must be less than, okay, less than minus 7. This value over here will be less than minus 7, okay, so less than minus 7. So what I can do now is solve this inequality for k. So I have 2 over 3 plus k is less than minus 7. I'm going to quickly solve this inequality. 
Okay, after solving the inequality, I obtain k is less than minus 23 over 3. And that there is the range of possible values for k to ensure that h of x equal 2 over 3x plus k has no solutions. If you found this video tutorial useful, please don't forget to subscribe.